MG Rob back with you. And today we're buttoning up that 63 Sprite. So I took this thing for a quick test drive. Didn't get to drive it very far because it was trying to rain on me. And I do not like to drive customer cars in the rain, especially when they don't have a top. But uh, it didn't run all that well. And after talking to the owner, he said it didn't run all that well before. So we decided we were going to go ahead and do a quick compression check on it to try to diagnose the problem to see if maybe there's a burnt valve or something going on. So we're going to do a quick compression check on it and, and then depending on the results we might do a leak down test. All right, so I got my compression tester hooked up here to a number one cylinder and I got all the spark plugs out. Now there's a ever going debate online about whether you should hold the throttle open while doing this check or not. I've always done it with the throttle open and I'm going to continue to do it that way. And you guys can debate amongst yourself whether that's the best way, but that's how I do it. One good thing about this is with this uh, old type starter switch here it makes it really easy to uh, do checks on these. You can do it all right from underneath the hood here, or the bonnet, sorry. So we got about 130 pounds on that cylinder. That's not too bad. Now what I like to do is count. You can tell when that cylinder is coming up on compression. I like to count it. Do them all the same number of times. You know, whether you're doing it three times, five times, seven times, six times, whatever you decide you want. And then I usually like to take a grease pencil and just mark it right on the valve cover here right next to the spark plug hole. And now we'll do all the rest of them. Well, I got the results that I was pretty much expecting to see. So we got 130 pounds on number one, 125 on number two, only 60 on number three, and then 135 on number four. So that means we're losing compression on number three. My guess, by the way it was running, was potentially a burnt valve, and that is an indication we might have a burnt valve. So the next thing we need to do, take the valve cover off, rotate the engine around to where we're on top dead center on number three both valves closed and then um, we'll put some air in there and we can either i can actually the easy way to do it without a comp um, the um, leak down tester is if you have one of these that has the connector on it, which I do have one, you can just take the valve out of it, put it right in here, pump some air in, listen out the exhaust, and then listen out the intake. And, um, you can, and if you got air coming out the exhaust, you got a, 
your, depending on what you hear, how bad it's coming out, will tell you whether you got a burnt valve or maybe just a lightly leaking valve or if outside the intake or if you hear it coming out of the oil cap then it's rings but I do have a leak down tester that I just bought and I haven't used yet so I think I might want to try to use it alright so I got the valve cover off now and which basically what you do is you watch the valves and you know which one the intake is which this in this case this is the intake this is the exhaust so you watch the valves open and close as you're turning the motor over and you want to see the you'll see the exhaust valve open and close and then the intake open and close and once the intake valve closes then you'll be looking for the piston to come up the top dead center and in this case you can you know you can kind of feel for compression as you're turning it over and you, when the compression stops you're pretty much there then you can put the car in gear set the brake because depending on how much pressure you're putting into it you can actually have the car move on you and if you don't set it in gear it'll just push the piston right down and then then one of the valves will start opening and doesn't do any good. So of course now that I fired up my air compressor I gotta listen to that thing hiss which makes it a lot harder for me to tell whether it's coming out the intake or the exhaust here. I gotta listen a lot harder. But I'm gonna set this for 50 pounds and we see we've got only 10 pounds there, so that's quite a bit of loss. That's like 80%. That's like 80% leak down. All right, well, we got pretty good flow out the exhaust. I'd say we got a burn exhaust valve on this thing. And the symptoms were that it seemed to um, just be rough running, like it needed a lot of choke initially, and then would get better as it warmed up, according to the owner. And that's usually a classic symptom of a burnt valve. All right, so now that we've diagnosed it, we know what the issue is. Now, I'm not going to be fixing this car right now. We're just, since it doesn't take very long to check, he wanted to go ahead and say, put a little extra time in to check it now so we can find out what the problem is. And then when I'm back up and running again at the new shop, then he'll bring it out and we'll actually fix it. So one of my first thoughts when I test drove that Sprite was it might have a burnt valve in it. I need to talk to the owner to see if it gets better while it warms up because I was not able to drive it far enough to get the temperature up on it to find out if it got any better. And my suspicions turned out to be correct. Uh, a burnt valve will run really rough and take a, you'll have to give it a lot of extra choke to get the run right but as it warms up you can let the choke off and it'll just end up having a light miss and it be a little down on power but otherwise seem to run okay for the most part i have diagnosed a few of those over the years and each time i found one that i suspected was a burnt valve it turned out to be one so as always if you like what I'm doing here, give me a like, subscribe, share with your friends, comment below. In the future, we should be starting to see some more videos coming up once I get settled into my new house and the new shop. Just right now, I don't have a lot of time to put out 
too many more videos than what I'm doing right now. I'm trying to make sure I just get one a week until I get into the new shop and then I'll hopefully go back to two a week at some point. This is MG Rob. Later.